verse 16, verse 15. Let me get to the version that I want to read, and then you may be seated. But I'm going to give you quite a few scriptures today. But these are the ones that I will read. I'm going to try to teach for a few minutes, preach for a few minutes, prophesy for a few minutes, and then we're going to all do whatever the Holy Ghost tells us to do. But Pastor Hemphill, I am not a Pentecostal that doesn't believe in being girded up with the word of God. It is the spirit and the word. Somebody said it's the spirit and the word. So I want you to have an understanding that even though we may be jumping and we may be shouting, that that is not the sum total of what the Holy Ghost does and who he is. And I need you to walk out and go and study some of the scriptures that I have given you so you will know who it is that God has left in charge. It was a few years ago, I believe back in 2015, when the Lord told me that the Holy Spirit is the most undervalued member of the Godhead. Because we all understand who God is, the creator, the ruler, and sustainer of this universe. It's just been recently that I added sustainer to that because I had to remind myself that if God decided that this world would end, it'd be over just like that. And we all honor Jesus because he died for us. But many Christians part ways on the Holy Spirit. Some believe in Jesus and they just believe that the Holy Spirit pouring out, God pouring out his spirit was only for the Bible times. And those others of us believe in being fully baptized in and immersed in the Holy Ghost. But the real reason that the enemy has deceived us is because the Holy Ghost is who God left in charge. If you notice, God gave us power. But in order to have his power, we need the Holy Ghost. So he has given us dominion and authority on this earth. God gave it to us. So really what happens on this earth is our responsibility. That's another sermon. But he has given us power to complete his assignment in this earth through the Holy Ghost. Jesus, his work is finished. So you're calling on Jesus to do something that actually he's already done. And what the enemy wants you to do is think that the Holy Ghost is just a it. You know how you say, something told me to turn left. Something told me don't get into that contract. Oh, something told me don't get into that relationship. Oh, the something is not a something. It's a someone and he is the Holy Ghost. So if you minimize him, then you don't lean into him and you don't allow him to move through you to do all that God has called you to do. So you can go only so far without the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 2 verse 14. But Peter standing up with the 11. I, I want you to see that this is Peter standing, but the 11 stood with him. He didn't just stand by himself. Oh, that's part of the problem in the church right now. Peter stood up and the entire, let's put it in our, our today's term, the entire board stood up with him. The apostolic board of the new church that had just been birthed in the upper room stood up with him. Because they all stood, because they all had been endued with power. So there was not one that did not have access to or the infilling and indwelling of. So when this arises, Peter stands with the eleven. And he lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. I need you to know this, and I need you to listen. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. It is 9 a.m. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days. Somebody touch your neighbor and say, we in the last days. 
said God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. I want to say that again. On my servants and on my handmaidens, which means the women are included. The sons and the daughters, which means the women are included. His spirit is pouring out on all flesh. Because in the spirit, there is no respecter of person. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. You may be seated. And I know I've been standing up here, but now I'm going to set my clock. Praise the Lord. But, you know, Pastor Enfield didn't give me a time, so I don't know what that was about. I was waiting. I started to ask, but y'all know me. Then I didn't want to ask. Peter and the 12 and the others. The Bible doesn't really clearly say it, but historians let us know that there were 120 gathered in the upper room. If we back up the scripture to the book of John chapter 14, when Jesus is preparing to leave, he begins to tell his disciples that I am going away and I'm going to prepare a place for you. And he begins to tell them, I want you to go and I want you to tarry and I want you to go and wait for the Holy Ghost. He begins to tell them in John chapter 14, if you continue to read down around verse 26 or so, he begins to tell them, I am with you and the Spirit is with you, but he shall dwell in you. It's important for us to acknowledge this because these are already followers of Jesus. What we would call in our modern day time, we would say they were already saved. So the people who were already saved, who had already walked with him for three years, who had already seen him perform miracle after miracle after miracle, who had seen him die and be raised now from the dead, he is telling them, even you need the Holy Ghost. If Peter, James, and John, the A-team, or let's say it this way, I, I'll go ahead and give y'all this for free this year, the golden state of, of the disciples, Peter, James, and John, y'all will have it this year, LeBron will be back next year, but uh, if even the A-team needed the Holy Ghost, what would make us believe that we don't need the same power that Jesus said, it's with you right now? but it shall dwell in you. The thing about the Holy Ghost is he's always been here. He had just not been announced or presented to them through his individuality, if you will. He was there when God said, let us make man in our image. He was there even in the book, beginning of Genesis when it says, and the spirit of the Lord moved. Before God even spoke, he moved. The spirit moved, and then God said, let there be light. Oh, we're going somewhere today. We are. We are. I'm going to get these notes up in just a second, too. Uh, so the spirit has always been there. It is the spirit of the Lord that shows up when Ezekiel, in Ezekiel chapter 37, when we see that the spirit begins to revive the, dry, the, dry, the dead bones. The thing about the spirit in the Old Testament though, pastor, because we had not yet been recipients of salvation, the Holy Spirit could not dwell in them. He could not dwell there because they were not yet reconnected to the Father. So when you see the people that are great in the Old Testament, people like Samson, it will say that the Spirit of the Lord came up on them. And he came up on them and he would leave. He would come up on them to fulfill an assignment and then he would leave. I believe it is only Ezekiel that states in the Old Testament that the Spirit of the Lord entered me. But he could not dwell he still had to leave because they had not yet been a recipient of salvation because the Messiah had not yet come. So the Holy Spirit 
had always been there. He wasn't new. It was just his formal introduction to them on the day of Pentecost. It's interesting when we talk about the day of Pentecost. If we go back to the beginning of Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2 tells us, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come. I want to stop there for a moment because we don't understand when the scripture says fully come, that means that there was a set amount of time that had to happen in order for Pentecost to arrive. Pentecost is not a new terminology. It is not new to the Jews. It just signifies something different in the Old Testament. So now we have, we have already established that the Holy Spirit was in the Old Testament. Now we will establish that Pentecost was in the Old Testament. In the Bible, but what we call Easter is what the, the Jews call Passover. After Passover, 50 days after Passover, I told you I'm going to teach before I preach. 50 days after Passover was Feast of Weeks or Feast of Harvest, which was Pentecost. Penta, there you have 50. That's why it is 50 days. So in the Old Testament, back to the book of Leviticus chapter 23. You can write that down and read it when you go home. In verse 4, the Bible tells them that they are to observe three feasts every year all the days of their life. They are to acknowledge Passover, they are to acknowledge Pentecost, and they are to acknowledge the Feast of Tabernacles, which is in the fall. Passover is first. It signifies the blood being on the doorpost and the lamb and the death angel passing over the children of Israel when they were leaving and fleeing the Egyptians. And then 50, the Pentecost, which is also Feast of Weeks, or harvest was 50 days after Passover, where also there was harvest time. It's interesting, though, Pastor, because it's harvest time at Pentecost, but also the Bible says in Deuteronomy 16 and 16, y'all can write that down, that you are to bring a sacrificial offering every year at these three feasts. Passover, sacrificial offering. Pentecost, or Feast of Weeks, sacrificial office, offerings. Feast of Tabernacles, or Day of Atonement in the fall, the Bible says, and Jews still do this to this day, bring a sacrificial offering for three feasts, three times a year, in addition to your normal feast. Oh, it's quiet in here. But I'm going to tell you, somehow, sometimes to break the back of the enemy, we can't ignore the principles that are in the Bible just because we didn't see it written in the New Testament. It is a principle that works. The thing about Pentecost is, is that you sow a seed, you have been told to give a seed, but it's also harvest time. It's confusing that you're sowing and reaping all at the same time. You're sowing and you're reaping all at the same time. Could it be when God, when the Bible says in the book of Malachi, bring ye all the tithes and offerings into the storehouse, what are those offerings that he's talking about? The offerings that I have told you to give yearly. Oh, it's real quiet. We're going to jump in a minute. We're going to jump in a minute because we wonder why one group of people is blessed differently because the principles of God all work. As long as the earth remains, there is seed time and there is harvest. But at Pentecost, there is seed time and harvest simultaneously. I'm going to give you scripture. And Isaac sowed in a famine and reaped the same year in the middle of a famine, he reaped a harvest. Oh, Jesus. Oh, there's going to be a shift in here today more than in your spirit. There's going to be a shift in here today. Somebody is moving from one place to the other, not just spiritually, but you're going to do so in the natural. See, Pastor Hinfield, I'm tired of us jumping and shouting, and there are no tangible measurables that we have in our life that show that I have been obedient to the Word of God. I don't have to convince somebody that already knows. I don't have to convince somebody that already has proof that this works. 
This is not a multi-level marketing scheme. This is not a Ponzi scheme. This is not a get-rich-quick scheme. This is a principle of the Most High God. Oh, Jesus. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So it's really not your fault that no one said there is a principle that you sow a sacrificial seed, that you sow a seed at Passover, at Pentecost, and the Day of Atonement, Feast of Tabernacles in the fall. But at Pentecost, see, we sowing and reaping. At Pentecost, you sowing and reaping. What you sowing into is the future, and what you reaping is what you already sown. You're doing it simultaneously in Pentecost. Hey, shetaba shoto, reba shata. Oh, you got to catch this. You ready to jump and holler, and I'm trying to make sure that you get wealth in your household and in your lineage, not just for you, but for the kingdom. Listen, this is not about me and you, but because we think it's about us, then we have, we got to fight with you for money. I promise you, Lord, I wasn't going to go this deep. We got to fight with you. We're not trying to get something from you. We're trying to get it to you. The kingdom suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. Sometimes the way you take it is by putting your money where your mouth is. Oh, you prayed and you fasted, but you didn't put no water on it. You didn't water that seed. You didn't throw anything on the altar to say, God, I believe you. God, you have a covenant with me. God, I'm going to put you at your word. I'm not going to play the lotto. I'm not going to the casino. I'm going to put you at your word. He said, prove me. Prove me. See when I open up the windows of heaven. Prove me. See what I want open up the windows of heaven. Oh, that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. The heavens opened. There was a sound. Jesus, there was a sound that came from heaven as of a Russian mighty wind. The heavens opened. The heavens opened. Oh, Shetababa Shata. The heavens opened. And when the heavens opened, the Holy Ghost descended. Hey, Rabbi Shata. He didn't skip over anybody on the, on the, in the room. You have to understand how the Old Testament and the New Testament are married. Some of you keep looking over the Old Testament. Now I don't know what I'm going to do with my notes because I'm nowhere in my notes. But you have to remember when the children of Israel left Egypt, the Bible said there was none feeble among them on the day of Pentecost when they all got up. There was none feeble among them. We saw glimpses of Pentecost. Oh, we're going somewhere else, Pastor. We saw glimpses of Pentecost in the Old Testament. When they built the Tower of Babel, it was an attempt to get Pentecost. It was people being on one accord in one place. But at that time, they had one language. And what did God have to do to prevent them from circumventing his plan? He had to confuse the language. Anytime the devil wants your identity, he confuses the language. He makes you think the right language is wrong and the wrong language is right. It is confusion. God said if they agree, they'll make it all the way up here to where I am. So let me separate or divide their tongues. Oh, Pentecost, diverse tongues, dividing the tongues. Oh, we see glimpses. We see glimpses of Pentecost in Ezekiel chapter 37. We see Pentecost upside down. What do you mean by that, Elder Dobbins? Oh, Pentecost upside down was all the souls were in one place. They were in one accord, but they were all dead. They agreed to die. They agreed to lay in the valley. They agreed to stay that low. They agreed. And God sent a man. Oh, you think Pentecost wasn't there? He sent a man. And he said, prophesy to the bones. But it wasn't enough to prophesy to the bones if the Ruah didn't show up. So he said, prophesy to the winds. 
Prophesy to the wind. Prophesy to the north wind. Prophesy to the south wind. Oh, call it in through the wind. Call on the wind. Jesus. Oh, we see glimpses huh? when Ezekiel looks around huh? and then at the end, huh? after they have been resuscitated, after they are standing and full of life, the Bible says they were an exceeding great army. How can a great army die unless they agree to die? Oh, see, this agreement is a real thing because on the day of Pentecost, they were in one place. They weren't in multiple locations. They weren't in multiple denominations. They were in one place. One place. What does that mean in 2022? We got to get in one place in the spirit, which means there can't be any schisms or isms between us, which means just because I don't, I speak in tongues and you don't, you don't attack me. See, we so busy attacking one another that they killing our babies in school. We so busy attacking one another that we not fighting the devil or we fighting tradition and we fighting religion. We fighting doctrine. And souls are dying. Oh, I told you at the beginning, whatever happens on earth is our fault. It's on our watch. Where are the Ezekiels? That will stand. And like there was an Ezekiel, there was a Peter that stood on the day of Pentecost. The same Peter that denied Jesus three times. The same Peter that Jesus said, Simon, Simon, Satan had desired thee to sift thee as wheat. But Jesus said, but I have prayed for thee that your faith won't fail you not, Peter. And then he says something. When thou art converted, strengthen my prayer, brethren. Well, Jesus, I'm confused because that they told me when I got saved that was conversion so I know Peter was already saved he said look again oh it is the Holy Ghost that changes you it is the Holy Ghost that converts you so on the day of Pentecost when it fully came fully the process of time. Somebody, you in a process of time. And you don't understand that fully come is a set time or an appointed time. Just like Passover, Pentecost, and Feast of Tabernacles are set times. They are appointed times for God to pour out his favor. And you getting caught up in the wait. You getting caught up because it's taking too long. Jesus walked on this earth alive. He showed himself alive for 40 days with many infallible proofs, which means they could prove that was Jesus. They could prove that is, that is Joseph and Mary's boy. That's the same Jesus that we saw hung high. That's the same Jesus that they had to help him carry his cross. Oh, that's the same Jesus. They had to carry his mother away from the cross. That is the same Jesus. Oh, the Jesus that's showing up now in power. The Jesus that's showing up now saying, don't touch me because I have not yet been glorified of the Father, the same Jesus for 40 days and then while he's talking he tells them go wait and he ascends and the angel of the Lord Lord send us your angels I've been praying for us to see angels, not so we can brag about it, but the angels showed up in scripture whenever the people of God needed comfort or needed instruction or needed direction. And here are these disciples that are losing their savior once again. They're losing what we would call their spiritual father once again. They're losing their Messiah once again. They already experienced heartache when he went into the grave. Then when he raised up, they thought, oh, we got it. We're going to be together. And now he's leaving again. Which is why he starts by saying, let not 
your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. Oh, if it were not so, I wouldn't have told you. I go to prepare a place. Oh, And if I go, I will come back and I'm going to get you and bring you and receive you unto myself. So he said, go wait. You notice, after the resurrection, they didn't doubt anymore. They didn't go hide anymore. They all just went and sat. They sat waiting, not even knowing what they were waiting for. Not even knowing what the Holy Spirit was going to look like when he showed up. They waited until the day of Pentecost was fully come. They sat in a room for 10 days. It doesn't say that they ate. It doesn't say that somebody got them Uber eat. It doesn't say that they all went to sleep. It says that they were all in one place with one accord, waiting. Waiting. And the Holy Ghost descended on each one of them. I don't have time to walk all of those scriptures, but you begin to read the scriptures. He filled the room before he filled the people. And the problem is many places are not creating atmospheres for God to fill the room. They want to bypass letting God fill the room and they want God to just fill the people. But it said he filled the house where all of them were sitting. Oh, no one was on display. All of them were sitting. Peter wasn't standing up at that point. Peter wasn't standing up because everybody was waiting. Nobody knew who was in charge. Everybody was waiting. Fill the room. Fill the people. And cloven tongues as a fire sat upon each of them. That fire is important. Because there is the purification process. Or oh, the book of James tells us the tongue is the deadliest member of our body. It's the most unruly. It's hard to tame. We, if you can tame your tongue, you can tame any other discipline in your life. So it's set on the tongue. It's set on the tongue. Because the tongue is what we were given authority to use. You got to open your mouth and speak. And he gave you authority all the way back in the book of Genesis. That you were made in his image and after his likeness. It is through the tongue that you're going to decree and declare a thing and it shall be established. It is with the tongue that you're going to lay prostrate and cry out to the Lord and be like David. That said, this poor man cried and God heard me. So I got to purify that tongue. Hey, the tongue. It's set up on it from each of them. Prophetess Dana, the reason people can't surrender to the Holy Ghost, they don't want to lose control of the tongue. I, I, I need to know what I'm saying. I, I, I need to know. I, I can't figure it out. They don't want to lose control of the thing you've been controlling. But it's set up on each of them, cloven tongues. And they all begin to speak. Remember, Pentecost didn't just show up this day. It showed up in the Old Testament, which meant everyone was there celebrating the Feast of Weeks. Jews from all over. Some places say at least 16 different countries where Jews had been dispersed. But they all come back home. For the feast. And so they all live in different parts of the world. So they all have different dialects. And when I was reading again this time, uh, Lady Dana, you Lady Dana, you prophetess, you pastor, you all of that. When I was reading this again, people always said that the people on the outside were amazed. Because they heard the gospel preached in their language. 
But actually, the Bible says they heard them speak of his wonderful works in their language. They heard them glorifying God. God is a healer in their language. God is a deliverer in their language. God is my bulwark in another language. He's the rose of Sharon. He's the lily of the valley. He's the bright and morning star in another language. In their language. Oh, God is good. Who is this God they're talking about? Oh, God is faithful. Oh, oh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in their language. And just like we do now, there was a resistance to truth. I, I, didn't, I haven't titled this because I didn't even want to know what to title it. Because really what came to my spirit was fake news. They didn't really want to hear in their tongues of the goodness of God. They didn't really want to hear in their native language who God really is. So rather than receiving the truth, they say these men are drunk. These men, they're all drunk. Because how can they speak in our language? Huh? Ain't, uh, ain't these little men just from South Dallas? Because that's how they looked at Galilee. Huh? Oh, those men are from Galilee. Huh? They're uneducated. Who in there has a PhD? Who in there is bilingual? How are they speaking in our language? Oh, they're just drunk. They're just drunk. But I told you Pentecost is in the Old Testament. Listen, I, I, I heard a witness from the Old Testament that said this is not the first time the move of God was considered somebody being drunk. Oh, Hannah came to the witness stand. And Hannah said when I was in the temple that was full of religion and full of tradition, they didn't even know that I was operating under the anointing of God. And when I cried out unto God, they misunderstood me and said I was was drunk. How do they connect Elder Dobbins? Because the church is the bride of Christ. So when you see a woman, you see the church. That woman was travailing. You see the church was in there groaning and moaning on the day of Pentecost because they were being birthed out a new organism, a new life source, a new living being that had never existed before that day. That is the birthing place of the church as we know it. But it wasn't the first time that the church showed up to the church and the church didn't recognize it. Oh, Rabbi Bashat. Oh, it wasn't the first time. Because the priest, or the pastor, that's who the priest is. Or the preacher, oh, that's who the priest is. Or the prophet, that's who the priest is. Didn't recognize the anointing on Hannah. And confused it for drunkenness. Carnality. Oh, you cannot discern the things of the Spirit if you don't have the Spirit. Stop arguing with the world. They don't know nothing about the Spirit. They don't know nothing, bad grandma, about your God because they're not even in the Spirit. They have the inability to comprehend with their finite mind the isness of our God. It wasn't the first time there was a carnal preacher. Uh, that wasn't the first time that there was a carnal preacher in the house who couldn't discern what was going on. And so they sat there drunk. 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 And righteous indignation hit Peter. The boldness of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is not a coward. The Holy Ghost may tell you to use wisdom, but the Holy Ghost is not a coward. And however you got to say it, sometimes you have to cry loud and spare not. He stood up. He didn't run this time. He stood up. And when Peter stood, the brethren stood. Because sometimes you're already the leader. And when they've seen the leader go backwards, it causes the flock to go backwards. Oh, they had already seen Peter. They already knew Peter got revelation. But now Peter, the one that walked on the water, denied Jesus until he was converted. 
converted the converted because the Holy Ghost will convert you the Holy Ghost what that means he's going to change you what it means is the Bible says he regenerates you which means you can no longer tell me the problems that were in your DNA because he has already regenerated you he stood up y'all give me 10 more minutes I'm going to try to close this he said, these men are not drunk, as ye suppose. But this is that. Because they're Jews, they know what that is. Because they're Jews and they know the Bible, or they, know, they didn't call it the Bible at that time, they knew what he was talking about. When he said, this is that. <laughs> yeah, what Prophet Joel told y'all about, this is that. And I went to get happy. Because this is that. And we're in the last days, and he's pouring out his spirit again on all flesh. But then the Lord sent me back to the Old Testament. Oh, Holy Ghost. He sent me back to the book of Joel. And he sent me back to Joel chapter 2. And he sent me back to read over that scripture again. Because sometimes when you've been in church as long as I have and have heard scripture and read scripture as long as I have, you think you know it. But not only is Pentecost about a harvest, it is also about revelation. This was the revealing of the birthing of a new church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joel. Hallelujah. Chapter 2. I just want to read this to you because we know that he says down in verse, I believe it's 28, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. I was like, yes, Lord, that's what Peter, what Peter what Peter said. He said, it shall come to pass. He said, go back and read it again and read it slowly and read it out loud. And it shall come to pass afterward. Wait a minute. Joel's prophecy didn't start here. We keep jumping about the spirit being poured out. And we should. We keep jumping because the Holy Ghost now indwells us. But we should. But like most things, we Christians keep leaving stuff on the table. The word the Lord gave me at the end of the year last year was stop leaving everything on the table. He sent me specifically. That was yours. I gave it to you. Go back and get it. You can no longer afford to be complacent in this season. Oh, it's a switch coming. Huh? You can't be complacent in this season. And the reason you need the Holy Ghost is he will tell you when to speak up, how to speak up, and what to say. You can't. So I said, okay. And it should come to pass afterwards. He said, just read a few verses up. You don't even have to read every verse before then. Just back up to verse 25. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, that the canker worm and the caterpillar and the pummel worm, my great army which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed, and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. And afterwards, Oh, you didn't catch it. I will restore to you the years. We stopping right there. Years. Years. God is the only one that can give you back years. He didn't say houses. He didn't say land. He didn't say cars. 
He said years. I need you spiritually. Calculate in your mind right now the years that the enemy sent to kill you, that he meant to utterly destroy you. Yeah, those years. That year that you was depressed for three years and you didn't accomplish anything. Oh yeah, the Holy Ghost is coming, but first I'm going to restore to you years. 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 You buried a child. Years. You buried a husband. Years. You, you buried a parent. Years. You've been waiting for something for five years and it has not come. But you've been steadfast and you've been giving time to it. And you've been working on it. And I'm going to give you back five years. Five years. The years. That the canker worm, that the locust, he starts off with a locust because all of them are different variations of locusts. They just all attack you different ways. One swarms you, one flies. They all have different means of sucking years out of your life. Years of depression, years of anxiety, years of not knowing who you were. God said, I'm going to give you back that. So I can now pour my spirit. That's why you have the Holy Spirit. And you have not yet been operating at maximum capacity in the spirit. Because the years drained you. So you think the Holy Ghost is only for speaking in tongues. But he's giving you back years. You should have had that job. And it took you seven years to catch up. If you would have had it, you were in a failed marriage. It set you back 10 years. <laughs> years. Oh, somebody, y'all must all had a good life. Because huh? years, God is saying, huh? I'm giving you back years today. Huh? I'm giving you back the hardest years. Huh? I'm restoring unto you the hardest years. No need to be bitter. No need to be angry. Because <laughs> I'm going to do it the Pentecostal way. And suddenly, how? Suddenly. That's what Pentecost is. Huh? Suddenly. You've been sitting there waiting for 10 days. And they think it happened overnight. Huh? But you've been waiting on it, Dana. They think it happened overnight. Huh? But you've been waiting. Huh? You've been praying. You've been fasting. And now and suddenly, the day of Pentecost has fully come. Fully come. Fully. And I'm pouring out my spirit. I'm pouring it out on all men. Oh, Rabat Shata, on young men. I call every young man back into the kingdom of God. Rabat Shata, Rabat Shata. Oh, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. And the Lord rebuked thee. He's pouring out his spirit on young men, young women. You will not wait till you get old to serve the Lord. You will not wait till you get old to come back to God. You will not wait until you have wasted your strength and your intellect. You will not smoke your intellect and IQ away. You will not drink it away. You will not lust it away. He's pouring out his spirit. Oh, Oh, Holy Spirit, fall in this room. Oh, fall in this room, fall in this room. Fall in this room, fall in this room. Oh, Lord, we need you, we need you, we need you. Years, years. There is a bomb in Gilead. Years, years, the Spirit of the Lord is here. He has anointed me to preach the gospel. Oh, he is binding up the brokenhearted. He is loosening those that are depressed. Every chain and every fetter has to break today because the anointing is here. This is that. that the prophet Joel spoke of. See, we know the running Holy Ghost. 
But do we know to fall prostrate and don't get up until you're changed, Holy Ghost? Do you know to lay down on your feet, face and cry out to the Lord, Holy Ghost? Do you know the one that you'll get up with a new tongue? You want to run? We came to fall today. Hey, ba 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 ba, shut up. Fall in his presence. Huh? Fall in his glory. Because he's pouring it out. Huh? That's why they were all in the room sitting. Huh? They weren't running. Huh? They were sitting and he poured it out. Fall, Holy Ghost. He's in the room. Fall, Holy Ghost. He's here right where you are. If you're streaming online, he's right where you are. He's here. He's here. Fall. Holy Ghost, fall. Oh, the explosion that we need huh, is the explosion in our homes. Huh? We need truth back into this world. Huh? We need safety. We need peace. And we need Peters to stand and the 11 to stand with him to say this this is that. You can't get this like the old folks say. This joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. This peace I have, oh, if you look at my life, I should have lost my mind. But I didn't lose my mind because he didn't let me. He gave me back years. Fall, Holy Ghost. Fall, Holy Ghost. Oh, I see people being healed in their body today. Oh, I see people being healed, God, from the inside out. God came to heal you today. I'm going to close with this before we go into a time of prayer. The Bible goes on to say that Peter got up and he preached. And as he preached, the Bible says, help me, Holy Ghost. Help me get it out, God. The Bible says 3,000 were added to the church in one day. Before that was a mega church. 3,000 in one day. And I said, Lord, that's 3,000. He said, read your Bible again. In the book of Exodus, when Moses came down off the mountain, hey, Baba Shata, with the Ten Commandments, and they had already built a calf, and Aaron the priest, oh, priests got to get back in order in this season. Oh, the priests got to get back in order this season. The priests got to let the Holy Ghost fall back on them. Are they running from the Holy Ghost because they're running from the fire? You're running from the purification process of the fire of the Holy Ghost. And Moses was angry that they had built calves that looked like the graven images of their slave masters. Oh, I don't have time to touch that. And they had put all the gold together. The Bible says they took them off their wives' ears. They took them off the children. They took gold from everywhere and they built a calf. They erected something. They erected the work of their own hands. They now begin to worship the work of their own hands. Oh, we see that in 2022. That's why God allowed COVID-19 to shut the church down because we begin to worship the work of our own hands. Moses came from an encounter with God to see the entire church and the priests leading them, worshiping. And he called for it, and I'm summarizing. All the priests, who's on the Lord's side? That's what Pentecost is. Huh? That's what that fire is doing today. Huh? It's drawing a line. Huh? Because if you come in this fire huh, the wrong way, it will consume you huh? and burn you up. But if you come the right way, it is a purifier. He said, are you on the Lord's side? And he tells the priest to kill those that's been worshiping the idol. 
And the Bible says that they slain 3,000 of them. Oh, Pentecost is in the Old Testament. For worshiping a graven image, 3,000 died. <laughs> because of a leader, a preacher, a priest who led them in the wrong direction. But when Peter was converted, he could now preach and lead till 3,000 be added into the kingdom. I wanted to call this Pentecost is not just for Pentecostals. Because we all need the fire. Hallelujah. 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 I'm calling forth the preachers back into alignment. We calling forth the priests back into alignment. We calling forth every backslidden prophet. Every prophet that's been misleading the people of God. Every prophet that is talking double-tongued and double-sided. God, send your fire! Every evangelist that's backslidden. Those that are leading your children astray, send the fire, God. Create in us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit in us. Fall, Holy Ghost. Fall, Holy Ghost. Fall until we stagger, till we look drunk. Fall till we change the way we walk. Fall till we change the way we talk. Fall till we change the way we think. Fall till our desires become your desires. Fall, Holy Ghost. We need you, Lord. Come on, Lady Hemphill. I need you to sing with me for this over altar call. I just need you to pro. pro flow prophetically. Whatever you hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, send your Spirit, Lord. Rain on us. Rain on us, Lord. Breathe on us. Breathe on us, Lord. Shower down. This is not Shower that. Shower down. We got to become a church that knows who we are, that we can let them know this is not that. No strange fire in this season. No strange fire in this season. No mixing gods. No mixing the Holy Spirit and other gods. Send your power, God. Send your spirit, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, the wind is coming. Shower down. You guys as well get yourself ready. Shower down. The wind is coming. Shower Come on. Down. The wind is coming. Shower the wind down. of the spirit. Come on. Shower down. There it is. Come on. Shower down. Shower down. Come on. Shower If you need a touch from the Lord, meet me at this altar.
a new thing today Do a new thing in our hearts Do a new thing in our minds Do a new thing in our spirits We repent today We fall down today At your feet today hey, hey. Rain on us We repent today Cleanse us today Make us today Mold us today received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Let me say it this way. If you have never spoken in tongues, this is your invitation. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's a gift. You don't have to beg him for it. You don't have to plead him for it. It's already provided. All you have to do is by faith receive it. You don't have to figure out what you're saying. You don't have to figure out what he's saying through you. If you
you have the Holy Ghost but have not spoken in a long time, you should speak in your prayer language on a daily basis. If you have not spoken in a long time, this day is for you. This altar is for you. It is a pouring out of his spirit to equip you to do what he's called you to do. Reba
Probably done this before. Keep playing for me, that right there. But I need Ebony to come to the front, and I need Candy to come to the front. When thou art converted, strengthen your brethren. It's a strengthening season. Uh, Pentecost is a strengthening season. Uh, we don't talk about that part of Pentecost. Uh, but he had to turn around and strengthen. That's why he led the tribe, the twelve. Both women experienced the same thing. One you may know, one you may not know. But this day, there is healing in this room. The healing is not just for your physical body, though it is. Oh, she taba, hey, shata. Oh, Rabba she, hey. Oh, yeah, it is. Uh -huh. Oh, at the name of Jesus, Rabba she, hey, hey. Oh, we send your word, God, and you heal. Oh, you heal, Rabba, ba, 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 so to. Oh, it's strengthening season. I don't know if anyone else in here has ever lost a spouse. I don't suppose, but as a young woman, we're going to strengthen our sisters. We're going to be more like the military. We're not going to leave one man behind. I can't keep going to fight and I done left my, my soldiers all on the battlefield. No, no, no. We can't get out of this war zone until we pick everybody up and put them on our back and carry them out. I don't know. I'm waiting for instruction. Sing for me again. Prophet Dana. On us, shower down, shower down. Send your spirit long. Rain on us. Come on. Breathe on us. Shower down, shower down. Shower down, shower down, shower down your healing, shower down your healing, 
Shower down your Come healing. On. Shower down your healing. Shower down your healing. Your healing. Your healing. Your healing. Come on, heal God. Your heal. healing. It's the children's bread. Your healing. Your healing. Your healing. Heal the broken heart. Heal the broken heart. Shower down. Shower down. Shower down. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. In the midst of sorrow, in the midst of sorrow, you're a mender of broken pieces. 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 Shower down. Shower down. Hey, hey. Shower down. Heal. Deliver. Heal. Deliver. Heal. Deliver, hey, heal, deliver, hey, hey, oh, heal, deliver, hey, heal, deliver, heal, deliver, heal, deliver, hey, heal, deliver, heal, deliver, heal, deliver, heal, deliver, hey, heal, deliver, heal, deliver, heal, deliver, heal, deliver, heal, deliver, heal, deliver, you're the lifter up of our hands, the lifter up of our hands, the lifter up of our hands, the lifter up of our hands. Lift the hung down head. Lift the hung down head. Hey, hey, hey. Lift the hung down head. Hey, hey, hey. Lift the hung down head. Hey, hey, hey. Lift the hung down head. 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 Hey. Lift the hung down. The hung down head, hey, lift the hung down head, heal, deliver, heal, deliver, heal, deliver, heal, deliver, make ways out of no way, 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 make ways out of no way. Make ways out of no way. Hope to buy ya. Make ways out of no way. 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 Open the windows of heaven and pour them out a blessing. Open the windows of heaven and pour out your blessing. Open the windows of heaven. Open the windows of heaven. Hey, open the windows of heaven. Open the windows of heaven. Pour out. Pour out. Pour out. Pour out. Your blessing. Your healing. Your blessing. Your healing. Deliverance. Healing. We 
receive. Hallelujah. We believe. We receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to sit down. But before I do, keep playing softly for me. Pastor Hemphill will have to tell me if I'm out of order later. He didn't ask me to do this. But I need you to start being obedient to the principles of God as of today. This is your first Pentecost sacrificial seed. That means it's above what your normal tithes are offering. The Bible says it is to be a sacrifice. For somebody, $5 is a sacrifice. But if it doesn't hurt you, it's not a sacrifice. Let's be clear, your excess and your overflow is not a sacrifice. If you're watching online, if you're in this room, And I'ma just ask, at least, if you can, sow $50 into this house. I know y'all weren't ready for your 5,000s today. Y'all can have that ready by the Day of Atonement in the fall. But we're gonna sow and reap during harvest season. Pentecost is harvest. On that day, it was a harvest of 3,000 souls. It was a harvest of the 120 receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And if you did not speak in tongues on today, I want you to continue to seek him. Just ask him for it. He said, ask and it shall be given. Receive it by faith. If you make your atmosphere conducive for him to fill the house, fill the room, then he'll fill you. Thank y'all for staying. I know y'all normally not at church this long. But you really didn't stay for me. Hallelujah. My prayer is you leave here with the Holy Spirit that doesn't just make you run, but makes you fall down in his presence. And that you don't get up. That you will be like Jacob, <laughs> that wrestled with an angel all night. <laughs> that you don't get up. Until the old folks say, until your change comes. Father, we thank you for everyone that is given, for every seed that is being sown. Father, your word says that if you obey the word of the Lord, you will be established. But if you obey the word of the prophet, you shall prosper. I thank you, God, for sending prosperity now. I thank you, God, for blessing them according to Deuteronomy 1 and 11. That you are making them a thousand times more than they are and you will bless them. We thank you for sowing, but I thank you for harvest. God, I call in a harvest on their seeds that they've already sown. We call it in supernaturally. We speak to the wind and ask the wind to bring it back to our direction, God. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Hallelujah. Somebody will get money in the mail this week that you did not expect. The promotion that comes from the Lord is somebody's portion in this room. And somebody says, you don't even really have to be a prophet to say that. I'm not here to try to prove to you that I'm anything. But we are in the season of miracles. I'm going to tell you we have a testimony even in the back room, but I'm going to tell a testimony and I'm going to sit down that you have to extend your faith in this season because there are suddenlies that are happening all around you. And we have been lulled to sleep. And if you leave with the third thing, remember, this is that. This is that. So when the enemy comes up against you, open up your mouth and say, this is that. It was prophesied already. This is that 
But we've been praying for a young, a young lady's daughter in Tampa, Florida, who I actually have never met in person. But she's been attending my online courses and we've developed relationship over the last few years in the pandemic online. And her four-year-old was diagnosed with autism. And she did not speak at all. But last month, somebody touched your neighbor. The Spirit of the Lord spoke as we were praying that there was going to be an acceleration to her healing process. And seemingly overnight, she went from zero words to 65, almost overnight. They don't understand it. The people who are therapists don't understand it. But see, you can't understand in the natural the things of God. So when they question you, just say, this is not that. This is that that the prophet spoke of. So I thank you. And I thank you that we will receive testimonies of the goodness of the Lord to those of you under the sound of my voice. Miracles, signs, wonders, healing, tumors shrinking, about shata, blood pressure decreasing, about shata, diabetes regulating, bodies lining up with the word of God, restoring you years. So they say you ain't bad. Okay, God can restore those years. God bless you, because I feel my help won't stop. God bless y'all. I love y'all. Come on, if you receive the word and the prophetic that just went forth, put your hands together and just tell God, thank you. Come on. Tell God, I thank you. Now give God a praise for this woman, anointed woman, prophetess, Elder Christy. Dobbins. Come on, y'all can do better than that. The way she just travailed and worked for your healing, deliverance, and freedom. You can be seated for a second. Uh, listen, we're so grateful. Um, you know, church starts at 1030, and, and God told me last week it was at almost 1030. I'm trying to wrap up my notes, and God said, next week, you need to get Christy here, Elder Christy here. And I text her at 1018. I had to look on my phone. Let me see what time it was just now. 1018, Paisley. And said, you free next Sunday. I know it's last minute. And li listen, they church started at 9 o'clock, so I knew she was in church. I know she probably looked at her phone like, why in the world? Ain't he supposed to be praying right now or something? Yeah, I was listening to the Lord. <laughs> he said, we needed you in this house today. And I acquiesced to the Spirit of God. They are, are um, they, they help us. Uh, in my own way, I say they help us pastor this church. They have been here from from day one. Uh, there's a story behind our relationship. I'm not going to take the time to do it now, uh, share it now. If you've been here for a while, you know it. If not, we'll share it another time when we have the, the, the opportunity. Um, so we're believing that what God started today, it's not finished. So we're praying, God, let this flow flow over into Tuesday leadership meeting. Let it flow over into Thursday's Bible study and let it flow over into Sunday that he will continue to pour out. He will continue to feel and overflow, heal, deliver, and set free. One more time, give God a praise for the woman of God laboring uh, with us on this morning. Uh, I'm done. Stand to your feet. Uh, it was amazing, awesome to see many of your faces uh, in person. Again, we'll be back here at Link Church Tuesday at 7 p.m. Don't worry, bring the kids. We'll stick them in a the room and lock them up and turn something on the TV. And we got food. We feed you. We just need you to RSVP so we can know how much <laughs> food to order. All right, if you can't make it Tuesday, we'll see you Thursday in person. This whole month, our ministers are going forth. Come out and support them, all right? Um, God, we thank you for what you've done on today, God through worship, God, healing that took place through communion and deliverance, freedom, and filling that took place as the word of God. Yes, the word of God that went forth through your daughter, this prophetess, this elder that came forth on today, God. 
We pray that what you started will continue to move, God. And as she stated, God, those who may didn't speak today, God, as they worship you on tomorrow, let it come forth. As they pray, as they lay prostrate at home, on the floor, in their prayer closet, God, refill and fill all over again. And at the end of it all, we'll give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen.